Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start implementing a projection in order to fix a few of those issues that we had in the last video with our box and whatnot. So, let's go ahead and get started. The way I'm going to do this projection is it's going to be a static member of the transform class. I'm going to store a projection in here, and that way I'll be able to have a second method. And it's going to be called public matrix 4f get projected transformation. And this method, instead of just returning our transformation directly, it's going to get our transformation, and then it's going to pass it through whatever our projection is. And then it's going to return whatever that ad tr translation is. So that way we have two options. If we just want the transformation directly, we can get that. Or, if we want our transformation plus whatever projection we have, we can get that. So, let's go ahead and let's start adding all the data we need for this. So, the first issue we had in the last video is when the box started rotating, it was a little bit bigger than our realm of reality, so it started clipping in and out of existence. I'm going to fix that by having a private static, not final, but, but a private static, it's going to be a float z near. And this is how close an object has to be to us before it can clip. So now we have some control over that, not just whatever OpenGL gives us. And I'm also going to have a private static float z far. I don't know if we actually had an issue with that. I don't think we, well, I, don't, I think we did. I just don't think we could see it. But that way, we have some control over how far something can be from us before OpenGL clips it. And so that way we have some control of that. Now the next issue we had is the box was a little bit squished because our one-to-one -one was the size of the screen, and of course, well, that's not a square like we were expecting. So I'm going to have a private static float width and private static float height, and that will be the screen width and height. So that way we can fix that issue as well. And there's actually one more issue with our projection that I didn't quite get to demonstrate in the last video. This was more apparent when we had our triangle. You may have noticed it looked a little bit funny when we first started rotating the triangle. Because, well, we had an orthographic projection. So, I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and correct that right here now by making this into a perspective projection. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have a private static float field of view. And the way this is going to work is this is going to be some angle away from our face, or well, our camera. And if, some, if it feel, falls into that giant triangle field of view, sort of like that, from whatever that angle is, then we can see it. If it doesn't, we can't. I'll go more in-depth on that a little bit later. So yeah, that's pretty much all the data I want for this. So, now I'm going to go ahead and create a method to actually set all this data. Public void set projection. I'm going to take in float field of view, float width, height, essentially the same things that we type, essentially the same things we just created. Float z here, not just z here. There we go. So yeah, just a list of all the variables we just created. And now, I'm just going to set them. So, well, transform.fieldofView equals field of view. Transform.width equals width. And in case you're wondering, the reason I'm taking in a width and height rather than just taking it directly from, say, our main component is that way we can we have some more f freedom in our projection. We can project it to have a different width and height if we want to. So yeah, you, you can play around with it a bit. And I like that. And it goes Z far. So cool. That creates our projection. And now really, all that's left in creating our projection is this method right here. Get projected transformation. So first off, I'm going to create matrix 4F going to be called tro projection matrix 
and that's going to equal a new matrix 4f and you see where this is going I'm going to be creating an initialization method for this and I'm also going to have a matrix 4f transformation matrix I could probably stop type a little faster than that new matrix which is not new matrix 4f it's actually just git tr transformation and yeah so before I go any further let's go ahead and create this projection initialization method an init projection method for matrix 4f so let's go to the matrix class let's copy the identity and let's just go ahead and create the next one this is going to be init projection it's going to take in the same parameters as this method so I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste <laughs> so now our eventual goal of this matrix is we're going to take it and we're going to multiply our projection by our transformation so what we want is we want a matrix so that when we multiply this projection matrix by our transformation matrix it won't change this one by one cube that OpenGL is using but rather it takes our world and, and moves it into this one by one cube. It changes all of our points, all our vertices, so they fit in this one by one cube in such a way that when they get stretched back out and all the other ridiculous things we saw in the last video, they will actually look like, well, they'll look like normal. They'll look like we expect. So that's sort of the goal of this matrix, if that makes any sense. And here's the first thing I'm going to do with this. First off, I'm going to create a float called tan half field of view. Guess what this variable is going to be? It's going to be the float math.tangent of math dot two radians two, there we go of the field of view divided by two. Well, yeah. And this is doing a little bit of trigonometry right here. What this is effectively doing is, let's say this thing right here where my code is, let's say this is my viewing window for my engine. What this is going to be doing is it's going to be calculating the distance from the edge of this window to the center, doing a little bit of trigonometry. I'll talk a little bit more about this in the companion video because the math in this is a little bit tricky at times, but yeah. And here's what I essentially want to do. I want to divide the x and y points in my window, well, in my 3D world. I want to divide their x and y points so that they sort of fit into this one by one box. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to divide by the distance to the center, which is, guess what? The tan half field of view. And that's the first thing I'm going to do here. So, yeah. I should probably just say 1.0f, just to be more specific, and add more tabs. And yeah, I want that on x and y. So, I'm going to keep tabbing over, I suppose. Although there is one small change to this. In my x-coordinate, well, first off, this is going to work fine if, for example, my screen is, say, a perfect, <coughs> a perfect square. But, well, it's not. You know, I have less space in the Y than the X. So what I actually want to do is for the X, I want to scale this mount by my aspect ratio. So I'm going to say float AR for aspect ratio. It's going to be width divided by height. And before I do the division, I'm just going to multiply this by the aspect ratio and tab over just a little bit more. And that's sort of the first step in this projection. All I've done here is I've scaled all of my points in a one-by-one one box on the x and y coordinates. And it takes into account the aspect ratio. So actually it's scale squishing it in a bit, a little bit more on the x. That way when it gets stretched back out, inevitably when it comes back to me, it should appear like normal because I'm squishing it in in direct proportion to the aspect ratio. Again, if you want more in-depth on this, look in the companion video. There, it's a little bit more involved than I can explain right here. Now, this is when the math starts getting a little bit tricky. Because right now, 
we pretty much have the projection we want. Like, if we went through our matrix or our coordinates and set all our z values to 1, this would look pretty much like a perspective projection. But the thing is, we can't just ignore the z value like that. That would be too simple. We need to preserve that for the depth test later on. Otherwise, we have things intersecting and looking weird, and it's just nasty. So, we need to keep the z value for our depth test and then divide out the z value later on. So we still need to map everything into the z near and z far coordinates, unfortunately. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because OpenGL is going to automatically divide by the z value later on, but we need to preserve this z value we have right now to divide by and still map it to the correct value, while still preserving our original value, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it gets a little bit tricky. So here's the way I'm going... well, here's the way you're going to want to do it. First off, get rid of your W value for now. We don't care about the W value anymore. We're going to override it by whatever the Z value is. And that way, later on, OpenGL is going to automatically divide everything by the W component. And since my W is now the depth, that's automatically div doing the depth division for me later on. And now I can project it, keeping in mind that it's going to be divided later on. Yeah, just a little bit weird. So, if you really want to understand this math, definitely look in the companion video. I can't really give a good explanation without taking up a bunch of video time. So first off, I'm going to create a vi uh, variable called the range. And this is going to be our near plane minus our far plane. This tells us how much space is on our depth, I suppose. How much space we have in the depth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative z near minus z far and divide it by this range. And that's going to be multiplied by the z value and then eventually divided again later. It's... yeah. It's projection. It's a little bit strange. So now, I'm actually going to add to that two times... First off, I guess I should just say that this is sort of scaling it into the range, taking into account all that other perspective nonsense. Wait. Should be divided by z range, not z far. That's bad. <laughs> so yeah, this is sort of scaling it into the one by one range, taking into account how far and how near we're going to be clipping. And now, this thing I'm going to create right here, this is going to p move it. It's going to translate it so that it actually fits in the one to negative one cube that I'm sort of mapping everything into. And I'm going to multiply two times z far times z near divided by our z range. Again, I can't really explain the math in a timely manner, so if you want to understand it, please look in the other video. And other than that, that completes our projection. So yeah, I know, it's a little ridiculous, but again, more on that in the companion video. So, now that we have our perspective projection, I should be able to go ahead and finish this. I should be able to go ahead and create the projected transformation. So I'm going to initialize it to that with all our static variables. And I'm going to return my projection matrix. I'm going to multiply it times our transformation matrix. And that should give us... Wait. Yes. And that should project the transformation prospectively. So, yeah. Now if I go to the game, first off, don't forget to actually initialize the, pr the tr projection in here. That's, that would be bad. So, set projection. Set field of view to, I'll set 70. Width to main component dot width. Height to main component dot height. Z near, I'll set to 0 0.1F, and Z far, I'll set to 1000. So, that is our projection. You can play around with all this stuff. Believe me, actually, I recommend it. You can get some pretty interesting stuff if you play around with this a bit. But yeah. So first off, I'm going to comment out this scaling code, and just give you a little bit of before and after. So before. Looks like this. It's clipping in and out of existence. It's squished. It looks a little bit trippy. After. Change this to transform.getprojectedTransformation. 
And I'm actually probably going to need to move this on the z-axis or not going to be able to see it. Yeah, I thought so. So I'm going to move this five units on the z-axis. And there you go. After. It's a full 3D rotating cube in perspective. So yeah, there you go. I, I'm pretty happy with this. It looks pretty nice. It looks a lot closer to what we had in Blender. It looks a lot more like what your eye would expect. So yeah, there you go. Again, I know I couldn't explain the math as much as I'd like in this video. So if you would let, be more interested in knowing how some of this math works and you know why these equations actually do what I say they do, then you might be interested in checking out the companion video, where I'll talk a little bit about how this projection works, and also, in addition to that, I'll talk about a few other projections, namely the orthographic projection, that you might be interested in doing. You know, maybe perspective projection isn't for you. Maybe you're not going for photorealism. So yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.